Hello and welcome. My name is Casper Ryan and you are joining us for our Canada Disability Initiative Roundup event. Before we get started, I wanted to run through our accessibility components. Our meeting today features simultaneous English and French translation, LSQ and ASL interpretation, and English captioning. Please take a moment to adjust your settings as appropriate. First, please select your preferred language, English or French. You do this by selecting the interpretation option on your Zoom menu. Once you select this option, you will not need to change the language setting again during the presentation. You must select a language, even if you want to hear this presentation in English. For those who require ASL or LSQ interpretation, we will be spotlighting those components throughout the presentation. We recommend using Zoom's speaker view to view the interpreters and cur current presenters. If you are using shortcuts, you can press and hold Alt and F1 on your computer to switch between these views. If you're using a Mac, we can do this by pressing Command, Shift, W. To enable captions, select the captions option on your Zoom menu. If you would like to adjust the size and placement of these captions, you will need to go into your Zoom accessibility settings. If we can support you through this presentation, please leave a comment in the chat box and someone will assist you. This presentation will feature showcases by individuals with disabilities from across Canada. Whilst we would love to hear your feedback verbally. There are too many of us here today to hear from everyone individually. Therefore, we ask that you use nonverbal reactions to show appreciation for our presenters. This includes using the re reactions option on your Zoom menu, comments in the chat box, and hand waving if you have your camera turned on. For those participants who have their camera on, we will also take the opportunity to spotlight individuals throughout our presenters. Think of this like the big jumbo vision screens you have at sporting events. If you would prefer to not have your screen spotlighted, we ask that you leave your camera off. So to summarize our accessibility options, please select your language using the interpretation option. Select speaker view, enable captions if required, and finally, make sure to give us your thoughts in the chat box or on, or on the screen. Our team members are on hand to help you with any technical difficulties you may be experiencing. I also want to acknowledge that I am speaking to you from the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations. Territorial acknowledgements are just a small part we can play enacting decolonization in Canada. Finally, a little bit about me. You may know me as a videographer from the live theater scene. I'm a white male with dusty blonde hair and a bit of a beard around my mouth. So now without further ado, I'm very pleased to kick off this month's presentation. Take it away. Cool, thank you, Casper. Much appreciated. It's good to see you all. What's up, everyone? Bienvenue. Bonjour, bonjour. I want to just say thank you all for joining us for our second roundup. Today's event is going to be amazing. If you enjoyed the first one, you're going to enjoy this one, and then you're going to join the next one, and the next one, and the next one. My name is Luca Batuelli. I am also known as Lazy Legs. I am a professional dancer, motivational entertainer, and dance educator. I'm calling in from the south shore of Montreal on the Kanawakwe Mohawk territories. I am short, I'm wearing a hat backwards, and I have a big Roman nose, and I have a stronger upper body and a slimmer lower body. Uh, today, this event is brought to you by Disability Without Poverty. So I'm just gonna quickly share my screen to go into a quick PowerPoint presentation, and then we're gonna go straight into the event. Today's event is action-packed. We have Jane Melville-White, Martin Deschamps, 
and Minister Kwatru, who are going to be presenting and sharing their stories and their passions with us. Disability Without Poverty is a national movement where we are hoping to make sure that we can keep the government accountable for helping Canadians with disabilities and helping us get out of poverty. We want to make sure that everyone with living with a disability can be prosperous. Our mission is to realize our power, pursue our passions, and participate in every aspect of society. Some of the key elements that have happened in the past year is that the speech from the throne signaled a movement and a change to create Canada's first disability inclusion plan. Back in January 2021, Justin Trudeau officially passed Minister Qualtru in, in creating the Disability Inclusion Plan, and the federal government in their budget has committed $10 million to make sure that this can happen. And most recently, this past June last month, there was uh, the government that signaled and tabled uh, the plan to make sure that it can happen, that it is on the table. Disability Without Poverty is a national movement. We are a group of Canadian individuals living with disabilities from across Canada. Different, many of us are activists, are leaders, and people that really believe in inclusion and promoting change in a better way. Our motto is build fresher forward. What we want to do is to make sure that we can mobilize our voice. We want to make sure that everyone can everyone with a disability can be involved in all stages in securing a disability benefit from the design to the legislation to the implementation. We want to shape the disability benefit. We want to make sure that it's being created not just for us, but by us as well. We are determined to find the quickest way to get a new monthly disability benefit into the hands of disabled Canadians. We want to secure public support for ending disability poverty. We won't end poverty for people with disabilities without the support of every single Canadian. And it is thanks to events like these that we're hoping to be able to raise more and more awareness to make that happen. The Disability Without Poverty Initiative will be fully inclusive. Let's magnify our efforts and get as many of us moving in the same direction as possible. We want to make sure that this is led by people with disabilities. We respect the human rights of every race, religion, gender, sexual orientation, social status, and welcome your involvement. This movement is independently financed. We are supported by private and community foundations to preserve our independence. Together, we will ensure the Canada Disability Benefit remains a national priority. Your contribution is welcome no matter how big or small. Join us and for more information, please make sure that you visit our website, disabilitywithoutpoverty.ca. Now, without further ado, I am so excited for this show. Um, and this show, uh, before we get into all the, everything that's going on, uh, we like to start it off with a little warm up. And this is the first time that I've ever done this type of warm up. So I'm actually going to be inviting an incredible musician, a good friend of mine. His name is Martin Deschamps. Pour les personnes qui ne savent pas qui est Martin Deschamps, he is a Quebec rock star. Uh, and um, we're going to be leading this warm up together. So Martin is going to be playing a beat. I'm going to be asking you all to repeat the same moves I do to the best of your ability. The idea is just to be able to get our bodies moving and our blood flowing. And after that, we're going to go and start off with the show. Martin, t'es tu prêt? Je suis prêt. All right. All right. We're going to start off with that head bob. Watch that. Let's go. 
Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much, Martin. Very much appreciated. Um, so right now, I have the honor of introducing Minister Qualtrue, and we are going to go into a little interview. And uh, this is amazing. We will be able to get to know her a little bit better and uh, speak to her a little bit more about the Canada Disability Benefit. Hi, Luca. How's it going, Minister Qualtru? It's going great. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. I'm so excited and so honored that you are joining us for our second roundup. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. On behalf of the whole Disability Without Poverty movement, we just want to say thank you for your support. Well, thank you guys for, for starting this movement and continuing the great work of, you know, advocates and activists who came before us. This is, you have, you have tapped into something amazing with these, with this, with these conversations. Thank you. Um, first off, uh, before we get into the uh, interview, I just want to say congratulations. You've just been nominated for the Disability, the Canadian Disability Hall of Fame. So big congrats to that. Well, thank um, you. And for those, I've had the honor to, to meet you on a couple different occasions, but for those that might not know who you are exactly, would you mind sharing a little bit more about yourself? Well, thanks, Luca. Yeah, so I am legally blind. I have 10% corrected vision and have been involved in the disability movement in a number of ways pretty much my entire life. So I have the honor of turning 50 this year. So it's been a long road of, of learning to self-advocate, of learning to be listened to and insisting that my rights be um, be respected. And I, you know, I was a Paralympic swimmer and, and had some success on the international scene in, in the sport of swimming, and then went to law school and became a human rights lawyer. And I've always known that what I wanted to do my, with my life is advocate for the rights of persons with disabilities. Amazing. That's awesome. Um, you said you were a swimmer uh, on the Paralympic team. I, I used to swim not on the Paralympics, but what was your stroke? Uh, my favorite stroke was butterfly, but my most successful stroke was breaststroke. So, um, so yeah, it was really wonderful. I was I went to two Paralympics and one World Championships. Amazing. What what impact would you say that sport has had on your life? Uh, without sounding cheesy, because I know I'm about to sound cheesy, what I would tell you is I wouldn't actually be here today in this job talking with you guys if it hadn't been for sport because sport gave me an outlet to express myself it gave me a way to feel included in something and quite frankly it exposed me to a system where the the, the playing field was leveled for me as someone with a visual impairment and I I fell in love with the idea of, of inclusive system design and what if we did this for education or transportation or law what if we just were inclusive by design it was really my first foray into thinking about inclusion and it really impacted my entire kind of way of looking at the world. That's beautiful because I, I feel I can relate to you in terms of the dance world. Um, although sport and dance is not necessarily the same thing, there are a lot of parallels to the discipline and just to the creativity and just the, um, the, the motivation of just pushing yourself and that idea of being on that even playing field uh, to a certain extent and, and just the idea of the inclusive design because dance is something that I believe is for everyone the same way that sport and just in general should be for everyone as well. So um, that's awesome. And uh, going into just more of your personal life, uh, what role would you say that your parents had on you uh, growing up into Making you who, who Making you okay. Well, I'm very lucky. I had had parents who were committed from day one to make sure that the fact that I couldn't see very well um, didn't stop me from accessing opportunities for you know going to public school. But it was hard. My parents were told I had to go to a blind school, um, and they fought to have me included in the public school system. And quite frankly, every time I hit a roadblock, my parents were there to help make sure that the system I was I was living in was was more inclusive. And they taught me to self-advocate. So they, they really taught me from a young age that I have a right to be included. I have a right to ask for accommodations. I have a right to um, be part of whatever it is. And we can figure out because you don't always have to do stuff the same way it's always been done. And that was really, uh, really important in my the personal development to have them um, not only advocating for me, but teaching me to self-advocate. That's amazing. And uh, I, I'm a, a parent of, a, of a, a daughter with a disability, and I hope that I can be able to give that same 
uh, love and confidence into my daughter uh, uh, that my parents gave to me and that your parents gave to you as well. How old is she, Luca? Uh, so I have two daughters. I have a five-year-old daughter named Aura and uh, a newborn, well, not newborn, she's uh, 16 months named Luna. Wonderful. Congratulations. They're lucky to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, now, so going into uh, part of the reason why we're here and to be able to discuss a little bit more about the Canada Disability Benefit, um, what impact could you see that the new Canada Disability Benefit would have for persons with disabilities in Canada? Well, I, I don't think it's an understatement to say that this, this could be a game changer, both in terms of how we um, look at disability inclusion in our country, so how governments, um, kind of from a policy perspective, look at the rights of persons with disability and the kind of the absolute right to be included, um, but also as a ma major tool of poverty reduction. So we know that, you know, we've been hard pressed in the disability community to get um, leaders to see disability rights as human rights, but we've come, we've come farther than we had been on that front. But now it's a matter of understanding that there's a, a strict relationship between disability and poverty. And for working age Canadians with disabilities, poverty rates are almost twice the national average. Um, and in fact, at 22%, and we just, in Canada, there's no excuse for 22% of our population to be living in poverty for reasons that are completely arbitrary and discriminatory um, because of decisions leaders have made in the past. So for me, shifting or pivoting the conversation to one of poverty reduction is a really important um, step to have taken for our government and for Canadians in terms of talking about uh, poverty and the rights of persons with disabilities because it just adds a layer um, beyond a human rights argument in terms of humanizing what's going on around our country. Amazing. Um, how would you see that this benefit interacting with social supports provided by other provinces? I actually think that's the most important question overall with respect to this benefit. So I am very uh, committed and I have a very strong expectation um, that this will be an income supplement. This will not replace existing provincial supports. It will supplement them. The idea is to lift people out of poverty, not to give money to the provinces so we can pay for existing supports, is to add something to people's lives. So we were able as a government, when we negotiated with provinces, around the Canada Child Benefit to, to get them to agree that that was supplemental income. And we, so we have a model where governments have come together to, to give direct income support, in that case to families, in this case to working age Canadians with disabilities, um, without it impacting existing support. Because what I don't want to happen, and which quite frankly I will insist does not happen, is that somehow someone's entitlement to either other direct income support or services, whether it be Pharmacare or transportation or adaptive equipment is impacted negatively because we are adding a monthly income supplement to people. So I'm very mindful of that. And um, we're already talking with the provinces about this, but it is to me the most important job I have to do around this benefit is negotiating with the provinces so people are better off. And I think that that's something um, as that we as a movement have been hearing a lot about is that fear of clawbacks and everything. And I would say, what can people with disabilities and their families do to make sure that this CDB does become a reality and that there are no clawbacks? Well, I think what you're doing is, is exactly what needs to be done. And I would say, please continue raising awareness of this issue, gathering in spaces like this to talk about um, lived experience and how what we can do will impact individual lives. But listen, I mean, we have to have an all hands on deck approach. We have to commit, you know, get provinces to commit to working with the federal government. What individuals in BC talk to your MLAs and talk to the premier about how the disability community expects this to be a supp income supplement and do that across the, pro the country. I'd say do that across political parties. You know, if, if whenever an election comes, whether it's next month or next year, we have a stake in the ground as a Liberal Party, get us and make sure we do, and I can tell you we will, but like insist that each party will commit to doing this benefit. You know, we had a very positive experience with the Accessible Canada Act. Every party agreed to it. It, it, it was all party consent. It went through the House of Commons and through the Senate with everybody being on board. That's what I expect to happen with this legislation, but there's no guarantee. Okay. 
And I guess what, for those that don't know how, uh, like myself, to be honest, I don't know how, how laws are created and acts are created. Um, would you mind just sharing a little bit more, like now that this, the kind of disability benefit yeah. act has been tabled, what are the what comes next? next? Yeah, like how, how does it work and what, what are the next steps? Well, okay, so if there's no election, what will happen next in the House of Commons is when the House resumes in September, we will go, keep going through the parliamentary process. So there will be a debate, what we call it first reading, where pop, you know MPs will stand up in the House of Commons and exchange discussions or speeches around the benefit. And if people oppose it, they'll, they'll try and question me on why we should do it. And, and then it will go to a committee of the House of Commons. And that's where we'll, we'll hear from experts around the country, including many of the people who are most likely with us here today about the necessity of this and how it should be structured. Um, once it goes back to the House of Commons, it will then kind of do the exact same thing in the Senate. So there's this, this kind of step-by-step -step process. If an election is called, uh, before all of those things can happen. Um, technically, the law will not come into force unless the next government reintroduces it. So what, what you all will want to hear from your political leaders and candidates is a very direct commitment to reintroduce this legislation or similar legislation or to create this benefit um, coming out of the election whenever that might happen. Amazing. Wow. That's, uh, there's a lot that... <laughs> Done, uh, on, on everyone's end of things and I think like you mentioned that this is something that is an all hands on deck uh, approach and um, just uh, I think within our movement with, within our, our leadership team we actually talk about um, how much work it has been for you just to be able to get this act tabled and I know that it's something that you've had planned for the past six years and and the fact that uh we're slowly trying to make this into a reality let's hope that we can continue moving forward and, and all the work that you've done for the canada disability uh accessibility plan and everything that you've done we we truly uh, um, appreciate your support um now just uh we have to move on to some of the other artists but um do you think i know you have another meeting but do you think you can stay in for a little bit to i sure can and yeah. and i guess luca if you don't mind me saying very quickly i I was so pleased to see the word power in your mission because I think this, this is an untapped political force to be reckoned with. You know, 22% of Canadians have a disability. You know, galvanizing that, packaging that as a voting block, insisting on rights. Like this is a, you guys are have, have tapped into something pretty magical. And I think that political leaders are going to have to listen in ways that they didn't in the past because of the work you guys are doing. So thank you very much. I know you're an ally and I'll continue doing my part, but continue to challenge me, continue to challenge others, and we will get this done. Amazing. Thank you so much, uh, Minister Kostu. Uh, this is amazing. And uh, I, I, I do, I am with you and I believe that the time is now for Canadians with Disabilities and that this plan will become a game changer. And we as Canadians can become global leaders in making Canada more accessible and really uh, helping Canadians with disabilities uh, get out of poverty as much as possible. Um, so thank you, Minister Qualtrew. And uh, right now I would love to introduce and love for you to stay on for our next artist, but I've got a good friend coming from Rodden, Quebec. He s'appelle Martin Deschamps. Pour les personnes qui ne connaissent pas uh, Martin, Martin est un rock star uh, au Québec, en France, puis je pense un peu partout au monde. Uh, il a une, uh, une voix incroyable, il, a, uh, il est très versatile avec sa musicalité. Uh, puis uh, on partage quelque chose ensemble, pas juste uh, l'amour pour la musique, mais uh, l'amour pour uh, les strumphes. Uh, en effet, uh, Martin, uh, toi et moi, on a eu la chance de faire des spectacles ensemble dans le passé. Puis um, tu m'as dit que tu as aimé les strumphes. Puis je sais que uh, ton anniversaire, c'était la semaine dernière. Alors, uh, je, je fête mon strumph avec toi. So, uh, up, bro. <laughs> Alors, uh, avec ça. Um, juste, uh, est-ce que tu as le temps à répondre quelques questions avant que uh, tu vas chanter pour nous? Mais certainement, certainement. Parfait. Um, pour ceux qui ne te connaissent pas, est-ce que tu peux juste t'écrire un peu et laisser la, les personnes savoir euh, qui vous êtes? Oui, mon nom est Martin Deschamps, j'ai 51 ans <rire> et euh, je suis né handicapé, je suis né différent avec euh, 
seulement la jambe gauche. Euh, j'ai une partie du bras gauche ici. Quelques doigts à la main droite, mais j'ai le principal. Je suis un gars chanceux. J'ai un bon temps. <rire> Et je suis euh, un amoureux de la musique, comme tu l'as mentionné. J'ai commencé à jouer de la batterie à l'âge de 11 ans en écoutant les, les idoles, Bob Seger, The Beatles et Rolling Stones. Euh, plus tard, j'ai reconnu, reconnu en moi un chanteur, j'ai su que j'avais une voix. Donc, euh, c'est comme ça que j'ai commencé à chanter vers l'âge de 15 ou 16 ans. Et avant d'avoir le métier de chanteur musicien, j'ai quand même eu une, une vraie job, <rire> a real job, euh, à Belle Canada. Euh, cette compagnie qui, à la fin des années 80, euh, favorisait l'embauche des personnes handicapées. Donc, euh, moi, j'ai eu la chance d'avoir euh, cette opportunité-là de travailler dans une grande compagnie qui, qui favorisait, donc euh, qui aidait les personnes handicapées à, à même à être confortables à leur bureau et tout ça. Donc, j'ai été vraiment très chanceux dans, dans, dans toute ma vie, dans tout mon cheminement professionnel. Euh, Jusqu'à ce que je frappe aux portes des, des agents de, de musique, des maisons de disques qui, elles, euh, par rapport à mon physique, trouvaient que c'était un peu euh, étrange, que j'avais envie d'être euh, sur la scène. Mais euh, aujourd'hui, euh, ils se mordent les lèvres, ces gens-là, parce que j'ai réussi à, faire, à réaliser mon rêve et à, à faire ce que j'avais envie de faire, gagner ma vie avec la musique. C'est vraiment, vraiment spécial, c'est vraiment cool. Puis, une dernière petite question um, avant qu'on commence, juste parce qu'on on commence à parler un peu de temps, alors je veux juste faire certain qu'on a l'opportunité de, de t'entendre euh, chanter. Mais euh, depuis que moi je te connais, je sais que tu étais toujours une personne qui euh, travaillait beaucoup sur euh, euh, la sensibilisation sur le handicap, et spécialement ici au Québec, euh, tu étais euh, le, le visage pour la semaine québécoise euh, des handicapés plusieurs fois, puis on a fait pl plusieurs événements ensemble, toi et moi. Um, dans ta vie, dans les prochains, tu as 51 ans, tu vas vivre un autre 51 ans, qu'est-ce que tu aimerais voir comme changement pour la communauté handicapée du Canada? Eh bien, évidemment, euh, de l'aide, on va toujours en avoir de besoin. Euh, en fait, euh, quand on a... Euh, Selon la sévérité de l'handicap, on, on a plus ou moins besoin d'aide. Mais je pense aussi qu'il y a une volonté de la part des personnes handicapées qui n'étaient pas là avant, peut-être dans, dans un passé pas si lointain, et des personnes handicapées qui ont envie de vivre une vie à part entière, qui ont envie de foncer dans la vie. Il faut leur donner l'opportunité, il faut avoir l'ouverture d'esprit quand tu es un employeur, quand tu es un entraîneur. Quand tu es un, dans un band de musique, toujours considérer qu'une personne handicapée peut faire la job, peut être là, peut avoir du talent. Puis souvent, c'est comme ça que, à cause que les esprits sont un peu trop fermés, on, on catalogue tout de suite les personnes handicapées comme des gens qui, qui, euh, qui ne sont pas capables. Quand pourtant, on le sait, toi et moi, il y a beaucoup de personnes handicapées qui sont très capables. Puis ça, ben, d'avoir cette reconnaissance-là de. de, de de la société. Je pense qu'il est là l'enjeu aussi. Mais pour ça, ça prend des personnes handicapées volontaires, ça prend des euh, personnes non handicapées ouvertes d'esprit. C'est mon souhait. Exactement. Well, je pense que lentement, on commence à arriver là. Euh, puis euh, Pour nous, c'est un honneur de t'avoir sur la scène de Roundup puis faire partie de, de notre mouvement euh, le handicap sans pauvreté. J'aimerais t'inviter à chanter une chanson, puis je sais qu'à la fin, tu vas chanter une autre chanson. Alors, uh, uh, take it away, Martin. Merci. Oui. Ben, je vous présente la chanson. Euh, C'est la chanson qui s'intitule « Différent », que j'ai composée justement à l'honneur de toutes ces personnes qui sont différentes et qui sont fières de l'être, comme toi et moi, et, et d'après moi, la plupart des gens qui, qui assistent aujourd'hui. Et euh, comme je, je compose toutes mes chansons à la basse, j'ai pensé de faire ça à la plus simple expression, with the bass. Traversant le cosmos sur un météorite, voyage un spermatozoïde fringue. Et c'est le Big Bang dans l'antichambre sous les yeux de mes sept ans. C'est cette virgule dans le temps. Ça change étrangement le visage des 
Je pense que um, tu as une autre chanson pour nous uh, que tu vas chanter en anglais, mais je vais présenter le prochain artiste, puis on va te réinviter après à la fin, mais j'aimerais juste uh, te remercier encore pour cette belle chanson, um, puis je te réinvite uh, bientôt. Merci, man. Merci, bro. First up. <laughs> next up, that was the amazing Martin Deschamps, but next up, we have an amazing human being. Uh, and she's part of the Disability Without Poverty leadership team, and she's going to be uh, sharing some of her uh, stories and her writings. We have the beautiful Jane Melville White. What's up, Jane? How are you? Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute. You're still on mute, I think. Mute here. Ah, amazing. Unmute. Wait, wait, wait. All right. What's up, Jane? How are you? I'm I'm excited. I'm really it's very exciting to see all the um the um comments that are coming through, the good ideas that people have, the enthusiasm people have for making sure that people who live with disability don't necessarily live with poverty. And I'm want to acknowledge myself as a woman who has lived with a long-term mental illness and sometimes I've had enough and sometimes I've had less than enough and been scraping by. I'm a white woman. Um, I'll tell you that I'm 73 and my life made quite a difference when I, when I, um, when I finally um, started getting the pension because that just meant that I could could uh, afford to know that something was coming in my bank account every month. I um, live in Regina. I live in 2D4 country, and I'm grateful to the people who um, lived here before and who continue to live here as uh, my Indigenous neighbors. Thank you for sharing, Jane. Um, Jane, you are a, uh, a writer but you are also a poet and an author. 
Um, and you are also a member of the Disability Without Poverty Leadership Team. Um, besides the aspect of the Canada Disability Benefit being implemented and, and, and happening, what would you like the DWP team, what would you like to see uh, the DWP team accomplish? Well, I think we're showing how much creativity people have as we live our, our lives. I think we also show how are seeing how much people care for them, uh, one another, and also how much work it takes to care for oneself, especially when we are in poverty. And one of the strengths is that I've been working for 40 some years now to make sure that people who live with a uh, disability are speaking for themselves, that uh, I really like the disability movement uh, slogan that says nothing about us without us. And I want to see that amplified so that each person has a chance to be an individual, to create and to care and to live a full and useful and happy life. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jane, for sharing that. And I agree with you uh, uh, full on about that. And I definitely see that the, the DWP movement is something that, you know, will help really give people with disabilities a voice throughout Canada um, and discussing and, and really trying to make, raise awareness for people with disabilities to, to make a systematic change. Um, with that being said, uh, I know that you've prepared uh, a story for us, and I'd love for you to share uh, your story on how to milk a monster. How to Melt a Monster is a short piece of fiction I wrote recently, and um, somebody asked if they could talk to the monster, and I'm afraid not today, but maybe another day. How to Melt a Monster. It's tough being a monster. Can we get the next slide? Yes, I'm invisible. So sometimes I get ignored completely. Even if I creak the bed and drop pencils on the floor, a mother comes in and says, it's just the wind, I'll close the window. And then I don't even have a way to escape. Sometimes for fun, I go haunt the grown-ups, but their imaginations are so weak, I don't even, they don't even pay attention. So when the window goes up again, I move on. Mark, can we move to slide two? Uh, it should be on slide two right now. It's, on, it's still on the title slide, please. Is it? Okay, hold on one second. There he is. I noticed this boy in the park and I followed him home. About four years old, muddy running shoes, old baseball cap, toe to head, just a perfect age and stage and without a mother fussing. If I could scare him right, just right, he could ask for her attention and get a hug. This will be fun. When he got to the door, he pulled out a key and let himself into the shabby house. No mom, no dad, no babysitter. I felt uneasy. Nobody yelled, take off your shoes, wash your hands. Supper will be in about an hour. You can have a snack. I'm a serial ghoster and I know how things are supposed to work. The only normal thing he did was to open the fridge and drink the last drop of milk from the carton. He put the one liter box back into the empty fridge. He turned on the television wiggling the dial until the blizzard cleared enough to see cartoons. A bright yellow creature said, My name is Dandelion. 
what's yours? And the boy replied, less. At least I knew he had a voice and a name, less. Les lay down on the floor, head on one of the cushions he'd pulled off the sagging couch. Not even a bed for me to hide under. And I've never operated in a place where the kid could not go screaming or whining to a grown up. It was much more fun fooling the parent than scaring the child. Usually the mother comforted, it's nothing, you're okay. Often the dad objected, don't be afraid of a shadow. The sun went behind a cloud, you're okay. I felt like a mountain climber without a rope. I felt scared. Just a minute, that's not my plan. My usual strategy is to scare the child. Let the parent give the comfort. I could feel quiet, crushing listlessness in the air. No curiosity. No response when I rattled a pan in the sink full of dirty dishes. Just a tired smile when I breezed past and tickled his nose. The terror in which this boy lived was greater than I would ever instill in a child. I looked for a place to hide, a safe place for me. I was frightened for myself and for this less. He was almost asleep. The tool of a good monster is to quietly enter the mind of a child and put in a scary thought. When I entered his mind, he was dreaming of a battered teddy bear. Someone was screaming, you're too big for toys. I melted. I never before cried real tears on a job. I was out of my depth. But monsters are creative about fooling a child. So I left a suggestion and lay down on the floor. A hand crept out and pulled me under his arm. Les smiled and held me tight. My usual job is to scare children enough for parents to notice and reassure them. Tonight, I had a tougher assignment. And to tell the truth, it felt good to allow myself to be loved and comforted by a hungry boy in dirty clothes. Next slide, please. Jane, that was beautiful. Thank you. Um, wow. <laughs> I think uh, you, you've let a lot of us speechless uh, with that beautiful story. Thank you for sharing. Um, wow. <laughs> uh, Jane, I, I, I want to invite you back. Uh, we have another song from Martin. And then Good. after that, uh, we would love to have you uh, share another poem, if that's okay. Sounds good to me. Amazing. Thank you so much uh, for presenting, and we'll see you in a couple minutes. So we're coming towards the end of our roundup, and Martin Deschamps has one more song for us. I think this one will get us uh, moving and grooving. Uh, you may have heard of it before. Martin, take it away, bro. Oh yeah. So uh, people think people think it, it, it takes fingers to play guitar, but when you know how to tune it, and you have kind of a jar at the end of the arm, <laughs> you can play the blues. <laughs> Born. 
Congress has all got around. They gave another wild wonder. And at the door they found. And there spoke up. She said, leave this one alone. They could tell right away. I was bad to the bone. Bad to the bone. Bad to the bone. thousand more baby before I'm through one of yours pretty baby yours and yours alone I'm gonna tell you honey I'm bad of the bone Squeal. One of yours, pretty baby. Yours and yours alone. I'm here to tell you, honey. I'm bad to the bone. Bad to the bone. Bad. 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 When I walk the streets, kings and queens step aside. Every woman I meet, they all stay satisfied. I wanna tell you, pretty baby, you see I'll make my own. Cause I'm here to tell you, honey, I'm bad of the bone, bad of the bone. B -b 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 -bad. You are bad to the bone, and I am honored to call you a friend. Merci beaucoup pour participer au Roundup avec nous. On espère qu'on pourrait te revoir dans le futur, dans les autres événements, puis uh, continuer à nous uh, aider à, à, à passer le message uh, à, à travers le Québec et le reste du Canada. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Lucas. Merci à toute l'équipe et bravo. Merci. Right now, I'd love to be able to bring back Jane White to share a beautiful poem called Balloon. So we're going to bring back Jane. Jane, you have one more poem to share with us. You shared this with uh, our group, and uh, we really wanted you to share it. So here it is. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Uh, Jane, you're on mute. Sorry. Thank you. Now, I have two poems. Do you have time for both of them or just one? I think just because of time, we have time just for one. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so I'll ask Mark to bring me to the balloon poem one. The slide to the balloon poem. Thank you. And I'd like to uh, dedicate this poem to everyone who took part in this roundup, the last roundup, the roundups that there who are to come and to everyone who is listening. I could not be complete till I had met you, had shared 10 minutes or the rest of my life. God knows how long I'll need to share your soul 
but in my recognition of yourself, a part of me now lives. Like air to a balloon, you've rounded me and filled me with new joy. Thank you. Bravo. Merci, Jane. Thank you so much for sharing, Jane. Um, I think I speak on behalf of everyone on the leadership team, and I'm reading also some of the messages on the side. Uh, you're such a beautiful soul, and I think that your heart is filled with air, and you're bringing us, and you have such a beautiful, big heart, and we are honored to have you be a part of our, our team with us, and we continue to keep on raising awareness for Canadians with disabilities. So merci beaucoup. Thank you so much, Jane. Hey, Luca. Yo, what's up, Martin? I just wanted to, to have a smurfing day, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> have an awesome smurfing day. <laughs> Merci, Martin. Um, so we are coming towards the end of our Roundup event. Uh, I want to say a big thank you to Jane White, Jane Melville White, to Martin Deschamps, to Minister Qualtru. Thank you so much for being a part of it. And most importantly, thank you to all of you, to everyone that has been joining us uh, for this uh, beautiful event. This is a monthly event. We are going to be doing this once a month. If you are an artist with a disability or you know some amazing artists that think could be part of this, please shoot us an email. Come and visit us uh, on our website and, and let us know. I see uh, Minister Qualtru, you actually uh, came back on. Do you mind uh, saying a, a final word? Would that be cool? Sure, Luca, can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you. Yeah, Mark. Excellent. Well, first of all, wonderful, beautiful performances. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm inspired. I, I've read the comments. I want you to know we'll be following up with everyone. Um, and I'm, I'm truly committed to making this work. You know, we haven't always got it right, and we won't get this perfect, but we are going to make lives better for persons with disabilities across this country. Uh, and that's all I can say. Just thanks for doing what you do, and I'm going to keep doing what I do. Amazing. Thank you so much, Minister Qualtru, and we look forward to uh, seeing and continuing to work with you in the future. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Um, and uh, so just to, we have an amazing artist named Christina Sheldon, who will be presenting next month, and she gave us a little uh, promo video. So for those that want to get to know Christina before the event, please check out this amazing promo video. Again, to everyone that is joining us, thank you all again, and hopefully we'll see you next month. After Christina's uh, little intro, we have Casper finishing off with a couple final words. Merci beaucoup, everyone. All the best. Hi, I'm Christina Sheldon. The sun caught me our wonderful guests for being with us today and thank you to our audience for joining us in the celebration join me christina sheldon at our next roundup on august 12th
Wow, wow. Thank you to everyone who has joined us for this event today. I feel engaged and humbled by the talent and the drive shown by all of our performers and hosts today. My thanks also go to the accessibility team and tech support team for providing their expertise and for making this event possible. As well as a number of events that we have coming up in the next few months. These events are held on the second Thursday of every month. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter for registration and details of our upcoming sessions and to learn how to get involved. Visit our website at www.disabilitywithoutpoverty.ca, one word, for more information, you can also follow our social media accounts and YouTube account for recordings of these presentations. To get in contact with us, email us at hello at disabilitywithoutpoverty.ca. Please share and thank you again for joining. Have a great day, everyone.